Hi, I'm Dr. Michael Latola, and I'd like to welcome you to this clinical presentation on the reverse preparation technique. This preparation technique that I'd like to share with you today was really kind of born out of frustration, and the frustration came from two places. My hands, my left and right hands, and I have a very average set of hands. And I learned this pretty early on in dental school when I was asked to come on the weekends and attend a remedial operative clinic. Um, in fact, I think by definition, if you're asked to go to a remedial operative clinic, it stands to reason that you're not average, you're probably below average. So to, to call my hands average is probably an insult to actual average dentists. Uh, I just have to assume that I have below average hands. And I would uh, see great preparations once I got out of dental school and began attending CE courses. And clinical mentors of mine, uh, like Bill Strupp and Bob Lowe, I would sit in the audience and look at the pictures of their preps and be totally impressed. And I knew what a great prep looked like but I didn't know how to make these hands create that in a patient's mouth. And so my frustration level just uh, continued to rise. And so I began to do research trying to find a way that I might be able to find a technique that was precise enough and that was accurate enough and that was predictable enough so I could get those kind of results on a day in, day out basis with, with the, this set of hands. And, and I've been able to do this and I, I can't take sole credit for this. I got part of the technique from a 1940s prosthodontic textbook that I bought on eBay of all places. And some of the other stuff just came from research going through old Crown and Bridge textbooks and looking for uh, what might make a system that would make it easy for me to get great results with average hands. It's called the reverse preparation technique because unlike in dental school where we were taught to prepare the rest of the tooth first and the gingival margin last, this starts off by prepping the gingival margin first and so that really makes it easier to get a nice uniform clean margin very important to do because it's the one thing that assures that your laboratory is going to be able to give you a restoration that fits very well at the margin in dental school i was taught to prep the entire tooth and at the very end go and try to put a margin on this cylinder that i had prepped and i just did not have the dexterity to do that by prepping the gingival margin while the rest of the tooth's uh, hard structures are still intact and makes it much more easier to prep a margin at this point, much more predictable. And from the very first time I tried this technique, I saw that it was something special because I didn't wake up with a better set of hands. Uh, what I did do was wake up with a better technique. In fact, if I look back at the first 13 or 14 years that I practiced dentistry, I have to just conclude that I was a chronic under prepper. In fact, when you see this technique, we'll look at the burr kit in just a moment, uh, we have a way of using depth cuts. This is a depth cut based technique with some simple depth cuts. And one of the depth cuts that you place is a two millimeter depth cut in the occlusal surface. This is the same two millimeters that every manufacturer of practically every dental material has been asking for. And I never gave it to the laboratory and I could tell because when I started doing this prep technique, I would place a two millimeter depth cut in the occlusal surface I would prep the occlusal surface till I thought I was done and invariably I still had half of that depth cut left so I'd only prepped about a millimeter. It's no wonder that during the first 13 or 14 years of my career I tried out seven or eight different dental labs and frankly I thought they all sucked. You know as I look back at it now all seven or eight of those dental labs had only one thing in common and that was I was the dentist prepping the teeth and sending the impressions to them. Needless to say, now that I'm using this depth cut based preparation system, I no longer have that problem. I don't have the chicken scratch anatomy. I don't have uh, opaque spots on anterior teeth showing through because I didn't prepare enough. Uh, because I'm able to do things predictably and get a consistent amount of reduction, whether it's incisal reduction or occlusal reduction in the posterior. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at the burrs that are on the reverse preparation burr kit. Here is the reverse preparation burr kit, and as you can see, it's from uh, Axis Dental. Axis makes it, the burrs puts it together, and it's sold through all dental dealers. It's called a logic set. It's LS7551, but I think everybody knows it as the uh, reverse preparation kit. And uh, let's take a closer look at some of the burrs on here. The first burr that we have on here is a 56 carbide burr. You know, you could use a 57 as well, and this is going to be used to break the contacts as we go through the first step, break the contacts, because as you'll see, it's critical that we get a retraction cord in place, a small one without any medication on it, very early in the sequence. The 801-021 burr, this is probably the one that you haven't used much before. 
This is a round diamond. This is going to be used right after we break the contacts and put that first retraction cord in to actually prep the margin. And it's a round diamond, as you can see. And so when it's sunk to half of its depth, it's going to cut a perfect half circle in the gingival third of the tooth. That's going to do two things. It's going to assure we have enough reduction in the gingival third of the tooth. And it's going to cut our margin as a perfect half circle. That's going to be our prep margin. And when we do our axial reduction, we're going to be left with a quarter circle, which is, after all, the shape of the perfect chamfer or the shallow shoulder. It's either a deep chamfer or a shallow shoulder, however you want to look at it. Here's our depth cutting burrs that you'll see being used on the tooth a little bit later. We have a 0.6 millimeter depth cutter here that was used typically for uh, our veneer techniques and still used for minimal prep veneer techniques to keep us within the enamel. And it's a very short depth cutter when we just want to get an idea of how much we're reducing on the tooth, but we don't use it in the crown and bridge technique that you'll see demonstrated here. I have it on here though because this is the one burr kit that I use for everything regardless of it being cast gold, all ceramic PFMs. We have a 1.5 millimeter depth cutter here. And these are self-limiting depth cutters. You can see where the diamond is on the tip. And then there's a shelf right below it. And as you'll see on the, on the video, when we actually push this depth cutter into the tooth, it stops. You cannot push this depth cutter in too deep. So when I was in dental school, we were taught to do these depth cuts with a 330 burr. But the problem with the 330 burr, at least in dental school, is if you push it too far, you're going to do an endo access. As we get older, we get better hand control, but it's still an issue of trying to determine if we've put it in the full two millimeter. So on this two millimeter depth cutter, for example, there's no way to put it in too deep. It simply stops at two millimeters. And, and the key part about that is that it allows you to do depth cuts efficiently. So you basically tape this depth cutter and you just slam it into the tooth and you've got a two millimeter hole, which allows us to be efficient. You can see maybe the four rings on the shank here. And the, each, each of those rings represents a half millimeter. So when you see the four rings, that's a two millimeter depth cutter. The burr that we do the majority of the work with is going to be our 856025 super coarse grit burr. So once we've placed our depth cuts in, it's just kind of a race against time to see how quickly we can get all the enamel off the tooth. And this is our big workhorse burr, this 856025. When you, you know, you place depth cuts with these other burrs, but it's this burr that we're going to do you know, probably 85% of the reduction with. If we're not prepping the adjacent teeth, if we're prepping a single unit crown, it's going to be tight and approximately. So we're going to use a burr that's the same shape as this burr. This is an 856, but it's a smaller burr. It's an 016 instead of the 025. So it's a much skinnier version of that same burr that we're doing most of our reduction with. And we're going to use this in approximately just on the mesial and distal. Usually once we go through there a few times and create some additional space on the prep, we're able to go through with our 856025 and uh, take this all the way around the tooth, including interproximally. And then the last thing we need to do is the lingual reduction, the 379023 football diamond. Again, in a super coarse, I like super coarse burrs because by virtue of the fact they remove more tooth structure, they create less pulpal heat and they allow us to prep more efficiently. So that's all the burrs that are on the burr kit. To keep the cost down, uh, we, I kept it at that amount of diamonds. There's actually one more diamond that I use. It's not on the kit. I often place it on the kit just separately. And that's this 856025. It's the same as the other 856025, except it's a fine grit, 30 micron diamond. And you can see the red stripe that's on there. And we take this burr at the very end. And because I have an electric hand piece, I turn the speed down to 5,000 RPMs. I turn the water off, and I use this burr along the gingival margin to smooth out everything. Because when you start to look at gingival margins under a microscope, there's lots of little chips out of there when you prep it just with the super coarse burr. So this is kind of over the top. This is because most of what I do is filmed and photographed. But it also just gives a more accurate preparation and impression to the laboratory technician. It probably only takes 60 to 90 seconds to go around with this burr at the very end and smooth everything off. The days of needing mechanical retention to help our cement stay on the tooth are over. The resin reinforced glass ionomers we have today stick very strong to dentin, even dentin that's been smoothed with a fine grit burr like this. We get 6 to 10 megapascals of bond strength between those resin reinforced glass ionomers and the dentin tooth structure today. So there's really no reason to leave a tooth rough for cement retention anymore. So that's the reverse preparation kit. Let's go ahead and take a closer look at how it's used clinically.